Hello, this is Miss Moore, and today during chemistry, we're going to continue our discussion of gas laws, um, and we'll be talking about something called pressure unit conversions. Today's essential question, what is the method used for converting between pressure units? Today you should have available your calculator and your unit conversion table. All right, pressure unit conversions. You should have this equality, actually a bit, probably a bit longer, on your unit conversion table. Um, so this is a big old equality here where 1 atm equals 760 tor equals 760 millimeters mercury equals 101 kPa. All right, and um, because these are constants or, yeah, not, no, we didn't measure them, these are not used to determine sig figs, okay? They are not used to determine sig figs. Okay, so um, what we're gonna learn how to do today is if we get a problem where we have one unit in millimeters mercury, let's say, and the other pressure unit in kPa, we need to convert between those units, get them the same. And to do that, you use the three-step factor label method, um, and one of the equalities from above to convert between pressure units. All right, so now we're going to try a problem. All right, so let's read through this thing here. Um, we have an elastic container inflated to a volume of 18 liters at a pressure of 983 torr. Those sound like they go together because we've got a certain number of liters at a certain pressure. Um... Um, the container then expands to a new volume at a pressure of 700 kPa. What is the new volume? All right, so we're going to be using the, the uh, equation P1 V1 over T1 equals P2 V2 over T2. So let's now list out our variables. So our ones are going to be 18 liters and 983 tor. Whoops, tor. And our twos are x and 700 kPa. All right, so before we can start the problem, hopefully you guys notice that we have tor and kPa. Those do not match. We need to take those pressure units and they need to match so we can cross them out. Um, it doesn't actually matter which you convert to the other, um, but what I normally do is pick the first unit. The first pressure unit is the unit I'm gonna keep. I'm gonna keep TOR. The one I need to change is KPA. So when I go to write a math problem, I know I have 700 kPa, I want to know what that is in TOR, okay? And from here, you do your normal um, unit conversion setup. So we'll start with our known, 700 kPa over 1. Now we need to find an equality that has both kPa and TOR in it. And so we have here, 760 TOR equals 101 kPa. So 101 kPa equals 760 tor. Hmm. Try that again, 760 tor. All right, so who's going to go on the bottom? We'll put 101 kPa on the bottom so they can cancel out. And on the top would go 760 tor. kPa cross out. And now, multiply across the top, and that gives us 532000 tor over 101. And when we divide, I got 5267.5. Three something 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 tor. Okay, 
Okay, so let's look at our sig figs. We have four sig figs, so we'll have five, two, six, seven. So now, instead of using 700 kPa, we'll use 5,267 Tor. Now that we have our pressure units the same, they're now both in Tor, we can plug our numbers into our equation. And this is going to be a Boyle's Law because we just have pressure and volume. So we'll have 983 Tor, which is our P1, times our V1, which is 18 liters, equals our P2, times V2. All right, so when we multiply the ones, I came up with a 17694 tor liters equals 5267 tor x. Okay, we need to get the x by itself. We'll do that by dividing both sides by the 5267 tor. Tor crosses out, and that gives us 3.3594 something something liters. All right, so now we need to look at our sig figs. So we have three and three, and here we're gonna use the top number here, and that is four. So we're gonna end up with three sig figs. So our final answer is 3.36 liters. Not too bad. Okay, let's try another one. Um, this time, why don't you hit pause, try to do it by yourself, and then hit play and see how you did. All right, so again, we're using the same equation. P1, V1 over T1 equals P2, V2 over T2. And let's list our variables. So we have calculate the volume of a gas at STP if 490 centimeters of the gas were collected at 400 and 76 K and 96 KPA. So it sounds to me like this goes together, right? The 490 centimeters cubed, 476 K and 96 KPA, and calculate the volume at STP. Those go together. All right, so let's try this. So our P1, our pressure one is 96 kPa. Our volume one is 490 centimeters cubed. And our temperature one is 476 Kelvin. So our twos, we don't know the volume. STP, standard temperature and pressure. So standard temperature is 273K and standard pressure is one ATM. All right, so now I note that I have KPA and ATM, which isn't gonna work. So I'm gonna keep KPA and I'm gonna change ATM. So what I know is that I have one ATM and I want to know what that equals in kPa, right? So we set up our grid. We start with our known, 1 atm over 1. And then we look back for an equality that has both atm and kPa in it. So it looks like we can use 1 atm and 101 kPa. So we have 1 atm equals 101 kPa. 
All right, so who's going to go on the bottom of this? Well, one ATM, so we can cross out units, and 101 KPA should go on the top. So let's cross out, and we end up with 101 KPA. So instead of using 1 ATM, for our pressure 2, we'll be using 101 KPA. All right. Now we can start the problem. So we're going to have P1, which is 96 KPA, times V1, which is 490 centimeters cubed, over T1, which is 476 K equals P2, which is 101 kPa, times V2, which is our x, over T2, which is 273 K. All right, so to solve this, we're going to cross multiply. So we'll end up with 96 kPa times 490 centimeters cubed times 273k equals 476k times 101 kPa times x. All right, so let's multiply the ones and see what we come up with. So when I multiplied the ones, I came up with, let me make a little space here, I came up with 1, 2, 8, 4, 1, 9, 2, 0, kPa, centimeters cubed K, equals, when I multiplied the twos, I got 4, 8, 0, 7, 6, K, kPa, x. All right, now to get the x by itself, we need to divide both sides by 48076 k kPa. And kPa crosses out, k crosses out. That all crosses out, and when we divide, we came up. I came up with. I came up with two six seven point one one seven, etc. Centimeters cubed. Let's uh, get that to fit a little bit better. Centimeters cubed. All right. So let's look at our sig figs. We have. 2 and 2 and 3 and a constant, so we don't have to worry about him, and 3. Nope, constant as well. All right, so we have two sig figs, which means we're going to have 26, or is what we're going to keep. Um, we're going to drop the 7. Um, so we have to round up to 27 and then use a placeholder because we're dropping a number before a 0. So the final answer would be 270 centimeters cubed. All right, folks, that's it for today. Have a good one.